The annual meeting of Jehovah's Witnesses this year was absolutely jaw-dropping. There were changes that were made that literally no one saw coming. And something that is going to have a lot of ramifications is some of the new light with regard to the judgment of wicked people and when that's going to take place. So let's talk about it. Hello and welcome back to the JW Thoughts channel. My name is Wally and today we are going to look at a talk from the annual meeting and this one is a real whopper and it has a lot of different implications that I can think. Uh, this is the day that it first came out so I still haven't flushed out all of my thoughts exactly and I am going to do a longer, fuller review of everything that went on during the annual meeting, but this was another one of the big highlights that I wanted to cover here in the first couple of days. With all that being said, let's talk about this. Now that we have the start and the end of the Great Tribulation in mind, let's ask a few more questions. How long will that time period be from start to finish? The answer is, we don't know. We do know that many events are foretold to happen during that time period. But these events may all occur in a reasonably short period of time. For this discussion though, let's focus on the few events that will occur toward the end of the Great Tribulation. So Watchtower has this little spectrum of the Great Tribulation, and there's going to be all of these significant events that happen. This is going to be important to remember. So, as it said, there's going to be the fall of Babylon the Great, or all other religions in the entire world, and then there's going to be events that happen after that. It's important to remember that uh, as it's related to the narrative. When does the attack of Gog of Magog occur? It doesn't occur at the beginning of the Great Tribulation, but toward the end of that period of time. This attack on God's people by a coalition of nations will lead right into the Battle of Armageddon. So Gog's attack will occur just prior to Armageddon. You're crazy. I'm not. No, I'm not. When will the remaining ones of the anointed be gathered and taken to heaven? The Bible book of Ezekiel indicates that when Gog of Magog starts his attack, some of the anointed will still be here on earth. However, Revelation 17, 14 tells us that when Jesus battles with the nations, he will come with those who are called and chosen, that is, all of the resurrected 144,000. So the final gathering of his chosen ones must occur after the start of the attack of Gog of Magog and before the Battle of Armageddon. This means that the anointed will be gathered and taken to heaven toward the end of the Great Tribulation, not at the beginning. When will the final judgment of the sheep and the goats take place? Again, although we can't be dogmatic as to the exact sequence of events, it appears that the final judgment takes place at the end of the Great Tribulation, not at the beginning. That will be the time when the Son of Man comes in His glory and all His angels with Him. To the untrained eye, that might have been a lot of hocus pocus and mumbo jumbo, but as it relates to the point we're uh, getting at, we'll just break it down to its bare minimum. You will have the start of the Great Tribulation and then a period of time that will pass and then the final judgment between who is righteous and who is wicked. Once the Great Tribulation starts, is there a door of opportunity still available? Well, to answer that, looking at this time chart, remember the judgment of the sheep and the goats, the final judgment occurs when? Not at the beginning, but towards the end of the Great Tribulation. So let's think about some that we know, perhaps unbelieving relatives, 
disfellowshipped ones, others that have heard the message, perhaps studied with us, could some of them, once they see the destruction of Babylon the Great, decide that what Jehovah's Witnesses were saying is correct after all? Could they take a stand for the truth? Well, if they changed their hearts and joined us, would we be disappointed? Now, we can't be dogmatic. <laughs> but we don't want to be like Jonah. <laughs> and say, so, oh, no, no, the door's closed. Mm -mm -mm -mm. No, no. Mm -hmm. You see, we need to remember other cases in the scriptures that help us to understand how Jehovah as a merciful judge has dealt with people in the past. This literally changes everything about Jehovah's Witness theology. They have operated on the fear that Armageddon could come at any moment, and if you're not in good standing with Jehovah at the time of the Great Tribulation, then you wouldn't have any opportunity. You would be cut off and you would die and never be resurrected. You cake on death. Uh, cake for me too, please. <laughs> Very well. Give him cake too. <laughs> We're gonna run out of cake at this rate. That is why people are Jehovah's Witnesses in the first place. That's why they do all of these crazy, ridiculous things. That's why they don't go to college, they don't focus on their career, they don't get blood transfusions. All of the things involved in being a Jehovah's Witness is predicated on needing to be in a good standing with Jehovah before there's any evidence. Now they're changing this. This is, it blew my noodle out of the water. They are changing this to say or suggest that someone that is disfellowshipped, someone that's not a Jehovah's Witness, someone that only vaguely knows about it or doesn't really care about it, that person can now wait until there's actual evidence of the Jehovah's Witness theology and then say, oh, well, it looks like Jehovah's Witnesses were right after all. Now I have a change of heart now that I have been presented with sufficient evidence. And the evidence being that all the governments turn against false religion. If all governments turn against every religion that's not Jehovah's Witnesses or all religion in general, that would be such a crazy event. That, that would have me shook. I would be scratching my head like, are the Jehovah's Witnesses right? Do I think that's ever going to happen? Not a flying flock of seagulls chance. But what this means is that if you are a Jehovah's Witness right now, if you are someone that is a PMO, that is kind of like in the organization, but you're not really wanting to be because you know it's not true or there's a lot of things you have issues with, you have a precedent to leave now. You can leave. A governing body member has just said, if you leave and want to wait till there's actual evidence and then come back, pretty good chance Jehovah's going to judge your heart and be like, yeah, that was pretty reasonable that you wanted to wait for evidence. This is mind-blowing to me. It is one of the most monumental changes to Jehovah's Witness theology that I have ever seen. I, I can't believe they did this, and I can't really get my head around why, other than what I've been predicting for a long time now, and that they are trying to pull back and become more mainstream Christian. Instead of every single question that comes up being a, we know the answer, we have all of the answers, we know from the Bible, they're taking a more casual, lax approach of, well, we don't really know. We're trying to focus on people. It's more important about what's in someone's heart, not these rigid rules. We don't want to be dogmatic. This is a big shift. This is not the watchtower that I grew up in, where you have the answers to everything. This is, well, if you want to be a Jehovah's Witness, that's fine. You know, we try and have a good way of living our lives. And if you don't want to be out... Uh, when the Great Tribulation breaks out, you'll still have an opportunity to join before the final judgment. This 
quite literally changes everything about what it means to be a Jehovah's Witness. And now I think there are going to be a significant amount of people leaving the organization that maybe were hanging on the sort of fringe witnesses. I think they're just going to say, well, looks like I can leave now. I don't have to report time anymore. Maybe I'll just fade away and it's not that big of a deal because I'll still have an opportunity after the Great Tribulation and there's evidence. All the governments turn on all the religions of the world. That would be such a monumental, crazy situation to happen that I, I, mean, I can't even close my eyes and imagine a situation where it would happen. But it would be so crazy that, hey, maybe that would be the time to come back to Jehovah. But of course, we might be thinking, yes, well, I understand why we said what we did before, but is it really the case that all these ones that we've studied with or so on, some of them may have a chance to join us after Babylon the Great is destroyed. Is that fair? <laughs> Last minute repentance. But you see, are we imitating the merciful judge of all the earth? Every Jehovah's Witness in the audience is absolutely going to be this person because the Watchtower has created the very monster that they're trying to meme now. Last minute repentance. That is what Jehovah's Witnesses have been taught, that you are not a good Christian if you want to just live a life of sin and whatever, and then at the last second, you try and slip through the door. This is the thing that Watchtower is famous for, of the, this absolute hard nose loyalty to the organization and to Jehovah. And now they're rolling that back and saying, hey, all you people that are disfellowshipped or that have been inactive for a long time, you can just come in after there's evidence and we won't judge you. We won't judge you when there is real evidence that you should believe all of our nonsense. So I just am fascinated by this. I don't know what the ramifications for it are really going to be. I know if I was a Jehovah's Witness listening to this, I would just get up and walk out. I'd be like, so I don't have to do any of this. Cool. See ya. <laughs> like, why stay? Why do all of the things? So I think this is like part one or phase one of them becoming a more normal Christian religion. I think it won't be too long before we see the blood policy gone, before we see the shunning policy gone. We already had, and we know it's going to have a major effect on the preaching work. The preaching work is going to be scaled back. They are going to make videos. They are going to make their little movies. There's going to be little carts set up here and there that won't be that effective. And they're just going to try and rebrand what it means. So we went from Watchtower to JW.org, and now we're from JW.org to JW.something else. I don't really know, but to me, this is absolute clear evidence that I was right all along to all of you bozos that said I was crazy and that Watchtower would become more aggressive and get harder in their stance and their policies. Ha ha, I was right. You were wrong. Take that L. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but anyway, I don't know if they are going to continue to do even more, but it just seems like the best way that they're going to be able to keep their doors open because the hardline Jehovah's Witnesses, they're going to stay no matter what. They are just, there's nothing that will ever change their mind. But if they have a lot more relaxation of the policies and it's more of a community rather than a commune, I think that they would have a lot more retention. So that's my personal opinion. Let me know down in the comments what you think is going on with all of this. But I find it absolutely fascinating. Here in the next couple days, I will be rolling out some more videos uh, going over everything that they discuss in the annual meeting because there is more context to this policy change um, and the new light and there's a lot of interesting things that happened during the whole thing so we'll be getting caught up on all of the lore here in the next week or so with all of that being said if you're still around don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel stay safe be kind and don't forget to smile and if you're a pimo out there i know you're gonna have a good ass day
editing Wally here, and uh, I am maybe changing my opinion. Maybe this take was good. Maybe it's not. I'm not 100% sure just because I'm still processing and taking it all in, but I'm doing it publicly, so I don't have uh, the, the convenience of just waiting and thinking about it and then saying something about it. Anyway, um, one other thing I was thinking about that might actually be what's going on here, and it might just be the simplest solution to the question of why in Tarnation are they doing this, is are they just getting sufficient pressure from governments? Is there more inquiries? Is there more lawsuits that Watchtower already knows about that the public doesn't know about, and they're trying to get ahead of it. And the reason I was thinking about that is because would it be a convenient way to make it seem less aggressive for someone to leave the organization? So think before someone can get baptized when they're 7, 8, 9, 10 years old. And if they ever want to leave, the policy was literally, you will die if you don't come back before the Great Tribulation. Now they can say, I don't know. We don't really know. Who knows what's really going to happen to these people if they leave? And it's less of a death threat. Because when if you're looking at this and you're like a charity commission or something, and you are looking at their policies and you say, quite literally, they are threatening children and teenagers with death if they ever decide to leave the organization. And that is how I felt when I was a Jehovah's Witness. I One of the biggest reasons you don't want to sin, uh, because you do want to sin, you do want to party, you do want to have sex, you do want to, you know, be a normal person. And the thing that keeps you from doing that is thinking, but what if while I'm disfellowshipped, the Great Tribulation happens, and I don't get into paradise, and I'm dead forever. Now, if someone is having that sort of quandary, if they're like, oh god, I want to do this thing, but I don't want to die at Armageddon, now they have a way out. Now, the shunning policy still exists, so if they walk that back as well uh, in the near future then I guess the gov getting pressure from governments absolutely was really getting to Watchtower. But uh, that is one of the, that fear of death if you are disfellowshipped and the Great Tribulation, bang, it happens. It is one of the biggest motivators for being a good little Jehovah's Witness and not just living your normal life. So I just wanted to add a couple of those thoughts out there. Um, as I was editing this, I was like, huh, I wonder, yeah, maybe I was, I don't know. So anyway, uh, with all that being said, uh, I already did the outro, so now I'll just say, uh, I have undiagnosed mental illness, and I have a cool black cup. Could that be the worst outro of all time? <laughs>